And how are you going to end as well? Because I yeah. see lots of people making videos and they're like, oh, well, it's going great. And then you sort of see them think, how am I going to stop? Where is this going to end? So I am a big fan of preparation. I'm even a big fan of writing scripts, actually. And not to read it exactly as it's there, but to, well, to think about what you're going to say and in what order. Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan, speaker, best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, and we talk all things money and business. Today's episode is sponsored by freemoneytipsbook.com, freemoneytipsbook.com. Head over there and get your free copy ebook, Seven Unshakable Tips to Get You Started on Your Financial Journey. On today's episode, I get to interview Elizabeth Griffin, and we're going to talk about marketing, specifically video marketing and why you need to have the end in mind. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. How are you? Hi, Angela. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. I would love for you to start off um, and tell our audience a little bit more about you and your journey and how you got to the business you're doing today. <laughs> I'm uh, Elizabeth uh, Griffin, uh, I think would, would be the best way to pronounce it. I am from the Netherlands, so I live in, in the Netherlands, and I have a rather big business in the Netherlands, and I'm bringing it to uh, the English language right now, so I'm really excited about that. I help entrepreneurs, mostly solo entrepreneurs, to use video in their marketing and to use it the right way so people really remember you and know who you are and are willing to buy from you as well. Very nice. Um, so how did you get started in this business? I started off uh, working for television, for Dutch television, actually. So I used to travel the world and record uh, te television shows all over the place. Lots of uh, shows about Dutch people going to live in faraway places like Peru and Ghana, and we would follow them with the camera. And somewhere along that line, I did get a bit bored with television and with traveling, and I, uh, I became a mother. And then I had to find a new way because you can't go to Peru if you have to pick up your son from the daycare center. And I started looking for a way to make money and be independent. And well, I working for television, you cannot really decide when and where you work. And I wanted to be the boss of my own time and where I was. Uh, so working with entrepreneurs became my next step. And being an entrepreneur myself, I had like a big shock of realizing I had to actually start selling my work. And I wasn't used to that because I was someone who was, well, I would wait for the phone to ring for my next job to come along. So uh, I started out a bit wobbly myself making videos because I knew it would work. And I was in a bit of a rush because I, well, I had to get some business for my business. And I started making videos just from my home. Uh, I took a, a, a painting of the wall and I, I stood in front of the white wall. I wouldn't do that now anymore. And I started telling people uh, not about they would have to buy anything from me because I was way too shy for that, actually. Uh, I just started telling people about what I knew about my craft, about video. And that worked astonishingly well. So at, what happened is that people, lots of people knew who I was, even though they didn't need me at the time or they didn't were too, too afraid to use videos. But, but they started mentioning my name to other people. And that way, the more videos I made, the, the, the bigger my, my, the more work I had, the more uh, I was asked to speak in front of audiences and to train people to make videos. Yeah. So for me, being visible on video was actually the, the flying wheel of the whole thing. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So early on, well, for your career with the videos, early on, yeah. what kind of mistakes were you making that you now teach for other people not to do? Oh, I made so many mistakes because I was really 
afraid of what people would say if they would see me on video. I was afraid my my former colleagues would 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 fall on the floor laughing at me, uh, and I was just not used to uh, being in front of a camera myself. So, and I didn't have a camera crew. I just had to do everything by myself. Mm -hmm. I started off doing things like uh, hitting the, the microphone repeatedly. Well, saying um a lot, uh, not preparing well for my video shoot and not breathing at all. <laughs> I don't know how I managed that, but I was really, really nervous. And it's only later that I thought, well, no one sees me fail. Uh, people only see what you post mm -hmm. and even if you uh stutter and make lots of mistakes we just cut them out and and nobody knows so that's when i realized that that i was still you're if you make videos you're still the boss and the director of your own visibility and then yeah. i became a lot more relaxed yeah so preparing is important too when you're looking to shoot content or videos preparing knowing what you want to say what the video content is going to look like not yeah, just... and 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 how you're going to end as well because yeah. i see lots of people is making videos and they're like oh well it's going great and then you, you sort of see them think how am i going to stop where is this going to end so i am a big fan of preparation i'm even a big fan of writing scripts actually and not to read it exactly as it's there, but to, well, to think about what you're going to say and in what order. Yeah. yeah. And I, I understand the end part of it too, because sometimes I'll write scripts or I'll think about what is this video going to look like? And then I get to the end and then I don't have a good ending. So yeah. if someone is shooting a video, doing some content, what are your, what are your recommendations to do at the end of the video? Uh, well, I, we always, uh, suggest something a next step we can call it a call to action but mm -hmm. it's all it, it, i think uh only one suggest only one thing and then choose with care for each video something different so i like to uh to uh say watch this video next uh like a related video or i uh invite people to read a blog or to react it's always but there's always one thing mm -hmm. yeah very yeah. nice so you're in the netherlands do you find yes. creating video content there versus other countries since you've been able to travel is it different for like give me some examples of what you've seen uh i actually i was when i started out there was very little video content in the netherlands so i had to i was i was like where can I find people who do this? And I ended up in America, of course. I ended up watching uh, Marie Forleo's uh, Q&A Tuesday and Daniela Port and, and, and lots of people doing, being really at ease in front of the camera. And mm. that was my big example, actually, because we didn't have that in the Netherlands. But now we do. And I, uh, when I started doing uh, more stuff in English, I was looking around and I, uh, I cannot see a lot of difference now. It's it's it's. I know uh, people in the Netherlands are, I think, a bit more uh, holding back than Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, we in the Netherlands sort of caught up <laughs> on the video content game. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But when I started out, I couldn't find anything like like that in the Netherlands. So I thought I will have to be that person then. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, important for, how important is it for like the camera, the microphone when you're creating content or videos? I want to say not important and then <laughs> well uh it's not fair. It's not a big deal. You don't have to invest a lot. I mean our our, our telephone cameras are getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Um and I do think a microphone is a good idea. Yeah. And something for stability. That's actually, I um, I usually advise people to buy a, like a, a selfie stick with, with little legs, mm -hmm. like this one. Mm -hmm. oh. and, uh, and a microphone. And that's microphone is about $15 or something. And yeah. that's really, and maybe a little light. But I try to teach people to use daylight as much as possible. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so you don't have to invest a lot of money to start your video content, no. but you know, the fo- I agree the phones today, the technology, the iPhone has got great cameras, great lighting. You can edit it so that you can brighten it if you need to. Yeah. So that's not, that shouldn't be an obstacle for someone who says that they're, they're not creating their own videos, right? We already have everything we need. It's just right there in your hands. We can edit and film and it's it's and post it online. So no, everything is already there. Yeah. yeah. So what other, give us maybe one or two other tips that you provide to your clients that help them, you know, to create better content that will hopefully be receptive to their audience, you know, maybe some other tips for us as well. Uh, I find that, and it's something I uh, took with me from television, I find that if you make videos and you are moving around or making sure there's something, some stuff changing in the shots or use B-roll shots or something, that people uh, watch the video a lot longer. Hmm. And I myself like to uh, push the limits on that a little bit. So I used to go out uh, just uh, around around my house and uh, go for a little walk and record a video there. Hmm. So... The thing is, if you start a video by taking a few steps, something in our brains goes, mm. where is she going? I want to know. And mm. I can see it in the in the YouTube uh, analytics. You can see people watch the video. Most people watch the video until the end. So that's my little uh, TV trick to, uh, to, <laughs> to make videos more interesting for, uh, for people to watch. Yeah. And, and actually I- a- editing editing helps as well. Yeah. And as someone who creates videos for me, I like to put my phone on my selfie stick. I go out in my backyard, which has got great lighting. And when I'm walking something about my brain too, when I'm walking, I just become more creative and it helps me with the video content. So I could see also having, you know, that movement too, from the viewer's perspective, that they're also just paying attention, wondering what's going to come next. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes, so and you, I, it's. I think it's a bit of a, 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 a trick, really, but it it works ex, extremely well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you advise your clients, or do you use AI at all when you're doing video content? Um, I have tried to use it for script writing, but I I think it's not that good yet for script mm-hmm. writing because script writing is really a, a game of psychology, mm-hmm. and uh, I do it. It makes uh, well. ChatGPT makes rather decent video scripts, but well, I I didn't like them so much. Uh, but I use it for creating uh, descriptions for YouTube. I use it for subtitling. So I'm very happy with the, with the possibilities for subtitling. And if I can't think of because in YouTube, well, you know, you you have so many uh, five hundred. Uh, uh, how do you call it? letters? Not letters, but you know, yeah. Well, well, anyway, fill the description, and it's huge. And sometimes I think I can think of any more to uh, to put in there. And then I tell Chat GPT, for, would you please make from these uh, two through hundred words, will you please make a thousand words of those? And that's that's how I use it right now. Nice. And I so hope it helps you expand it a little bit more to yes. create more. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's, you do that? that's good. Yeah. That's good for someone like me. Like I'm good at, you know, concise words. I can do a short commercial, but when I need to expand it, sometimes my, I don't have enough creativity band to be able to make it a longer commercial yeah. too. Yeah. So, and then, then chat GPT is just brilliant, I think. Yeah. 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 So what's, what's next for you in the future? Any big plans for your business or where do you see like content creation going? Ah, uh, why don't see content? I think it's still it gets the video is getting more and more important. Really, it's I think it's still small considered mm. to where it could be and should be. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to the future. And uh, of course, the there's always this thing with how real is video? How real is it? And and even with CapCut, you can you can even. Uh, give yourself like a, a, a nose job with, with <laughs> it's it, but still uh this this thing this this feel of reality that video can have i think that will only get more important interesting yeah. very nice yeah. okay so elizabeth i have a fun question for you yeah. um if you could have a superpower what would it be and why 
I would love to see into people's minds and see what they really think. Because that's the business we're in, really. That's that's what YouTube is about. So I would love that. And uh I would I would it would be scary as well, I think. Yeah. But that I would love it. And for myself, I would that and that's not a superpower. I would love to be able to sing really well. Ah, that see, that's that's mine. In all of my yeah. episodes, no one has said that. Like I would love to have a voice and sing yeah. and just people just yeah. love to hear it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> awesome, Elizabeth. So if our audience wants to get in touch with you, learn more about what you're doing to help your clients create content, how do they get, to, how do they reach you? They can find me on YouTube. My It's my name, Elizabeth Griffin, Griffin, uh, actually Dutch. And I have a website called Top of Mind Video Marketing where they can find me. And there oh. will be a book on Amazon soon with video scripts. And I can, well, this is the Dutch version. So mm -hmm. This is Dutch, but uh, in a few months, the English version will be out as well. That's awesome and amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Angela, for having me as a guest. Thank you so much for tuning into Empower Her Money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast, and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.